So without further ado, I will start the presentation and give you an overview of the Mechanical Street Sweeping Pilot Program that started in 2019 and evolved to where we are today. Uh, when we started the program, Mayor Kinney made a commitment to ensure that we would implement a, a, a comprehensive mechanical street sweeping program. And so um, several million dollars were allocated to purchase mechanical brooms, hire additional staff, and uh, ultimately we identified best practices for offering residential mechanical street sweeping. We used a hybrid approach at first, consisting of backpack blowers and hand brooms to remove debris from sidewalks and curbs. We used, of course, the mechanical brooms and sweepers, and we purchased trash compactors to capture a larger illegally dumped material that cannot be swept up in a broom, but needs to be removed nonetheless. It certainly doesn't make sense for us to sweep a street, but leave piles of trash on the sidewalk or in an open lot while more litter conditions and illegal dumping can take place. So our goal with the start of the program, and it will continue, is to make sure the entire neighborhood is clean and everything is removed, not just loose litter off the streets. The program is supported by our SWEEP uh, program. SWEEP stands for Streets and Walkways Education and Enforcement Program. This unit is responsible for not only issuing CVNs for people who don't follow the rules and regulations, such as putting their trash out early, uh, throwing litter or litter property not that are free, or improper recycling. They also educate. So if we need to bring our SWEEP officers to neighborhoods to give them an overview of this type of program, they're available to do so. So how were the areas selected for the pilot program in the city of Philadelphia? Well, we use a tool called the Litter Index. And this was a tool that was first introduced back in 2009 uh, in the city of Philadelphia. And it's a tool that is used by Keep America Beautiful. This tool allows you to measure the amount of litter in local neighborhoods uh, throughout the city of Philadelphia. We actually send people out and conduct a survey of the litter conditions on each street uh, in various neighborhoods. And so depending on what the condition of the street looks like, a one in this area is a green area, meaning that there's no litter. Two, which is the yellow areas, is slightly littered. Three, which is the orange area, which is heavily littered. And four, which is the red areas, which means there are tremendous challenges with heavy litter and illegal dumping. This is how we grade the city's litter conditions. And as you can see, we've had some challenges throughout the city of Philadelphia and many of our neighborhoods. If you look to the map to the right, you will also be able to see how we selected the pilot areas. Most of those areas are on heavily red uh, colored areas where there is the greatest need. So if you're wondering how we selected the areas that you're about to see, it's data from the litter index that gives us the necessary tools to select areas. And we will be expanding on that program because as you can see, the entire area where there's orange and red areas aren't covered, but our resources only allowed to do certain targeted areas. Okay, I think you skipped the slide, thank you. So the results of our phase one pilot is uh, was that we implemented the program in August 15 of 2019. We cleaned six areas with equipment laborers, um, uh, laborers and equipment operators. Uh, the tonnage, we removed almost a thousand tons, but that equates to about 2 million pounds of loose litter off the streets of Philadelphia. Uh, so you can see that the program was desperately needed. Uh, we cleaned over 13,000 miles on those areas, and these are repeating miles. They're not, they're not 13,000 consecutive miles, they're repeated times that we went through a block over a six month period. And residents in the pilot area, we did a survey uh, and conducted in those areas and it was highly uh, and favorably received by residents. I think 95% of re residents were extremely satisfied with the program and wanted to see it continue. And the pilot was conducted by an outside entity in the mayor's policy office. So phase two. We had, unfortunately, the pandemic of 2020 actually shut our mechanical street sweeping program down. Uh, we were forced to make very uh, significant budget cuts. And one of the items that we had to halt and close was the mechanical street sweeping program. So there was no street sweeping in 2020. 
Fortunately, our financial position improved greatly and we were able to restore the funding that was originally cut for our mechanical street sweeping program. And thanks to Keith and his team, they were able to keep the brooms, just apply additional staff and get the program restarted in the middle of 2021. And so we were able to do six areas. Again, we removed 200,000 pounds of trash, not as much as the first pilot because we started late and we had to get up and running. But nevertheless, we were still effective. The miles that we swept was over 3,300. This is something new to the program. Unlike the first phase, the second phase and future phases, including the one we're about to discuss, requires cars to be removed off the street where there are signs posted. The department um, yeah, saw this as a necessary tool to be more efficient in cleaning from curb to curb. We cannot clean streets when cars are parked or in the way. And so in this phase, we ask people to move their cars. The difference in this phase and the next phase, as you will see, is that we did not issue monetary fines. We only issued parking warnings from our sweep officers. The next program, however, and this is very important, that we will be ticketing cars for not removing the cars off a street that's posted. The remaining areas, we added eight additional areas as well. And that will be, we will go over that in the 2022 phase as it continues. So as I stated uh, previously in the previous slide, the new program, uh, which is starting April 4th, will have no parking on designated cleaning days. Signs have been posted in all of the six previous areas and we're continuing to post signs in the new additional areas that we identified. Only signs that were posted on streets that are large enough to have alternative street parking will take the place of, of, these, of the non-parking areas. So cars will um, need to be removed if your street is at least 14 feet wide. This will allow cars to be moved to adjacent cross streets or a street that is uh, parallel to your neighborhood. We don't want to inconvenience residents to having to move all over the city, which is why we, we um, created the program where it's staggered, where blocks are staggered, where cars can be moved while we're cleaning. In addition, smaller streets where we are unable to post signs uh, because of the inability for them to move cars to other areas, uh, will still have mechanical cleaning with backpack blowers. So no parking signs have been posted in six of the six clean areas. The program will operate on a four day weekly schedule from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. in two hour intervals each day from Monday through Thursday. There will be no cleaning on Friday uh, and Monday through Thursday. They will, each area and segment will be cleaned in two hour segments from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And for example, one area will be clean from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then another block, several, several blocks will be clean from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And finally, the last part of the day will include 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And at the end of the day, the sweepers will actually head back to the yard to be dispatched. So this is how the program will operate. But again, I have to stress the importance of cars being moved during this phase of the program. Next slide, please. So what does the expansion look like? Where are we going and what neighborhoods will be impacted? So signs are presently posted, as I stated, in six of the 14 areas that we identify in phase two. Our streets traffic engineering and division continues to post signs on designated blocks as the resources become available. The Philadelphia Parking Authority will conduct a rolling enforcement program and ticketing will begin uh, the month following April 4th. So in the first month, April 4th, we're going to also extend the warning period one more time to ensure residents understand that they will be actually receiving a CVN. And the CVN is, I believe, $35 uh, for a parking ticket if your car is not moved each time they come through and you don't move your car. Uh, after the 30-day period, May 1st, the ticketing will begin, but we want to give everyone advance notice as much as possible so that there are no surprises. This is why we're conducting these meetings. We're also going out door to door, handing out flyers with all of this information in it. And of course, we're using social media and our website so people will have access and information about the mechanical sweeping program. 
when can they when they need to move their cars and when can they actually return their cars. One of the things that we've added that we think that will be a tremendous help to residents is that we're creating an app where people can actually track where the brooms are in their designated area. This is important because although we post for a two hour period, if your block is at the start of the route, then you can actually, and, and we're actually went through, it takes us about 20 minutes to clean a block if all the cars are moved. Once the block is clean and the parking authority officer has already went through in front of the brooms, you can bring your car back even though the time has not, the two hour time has not been allotted. So by using this app, and by just going outside, taking a look at see if my streets were already clean, you see the sweepers go by and leave, you can actually bring your car back in a shorter time than the two hour period. We have to give that window because of the multiple number of blocks that we have to address. And we don't know at any given time when we're going to get through all of those areas. But on a routine basis at nine in the morning, if you're the first person on the start of that route, you can bring your car back once the cleaning is done. And usually that'll be around 930. So the app will help you actually see where our brooms are in a given area. You can then bring your car back and it won't be an issue with you getting a citation. The other areas that we're expanding to are the ones that are not highlighted in the map over here. And I'll go through it on each area, the ones that we are currently doing in the six areas and the expanded areas that we plan on starting April 4th. So how this color, this is color coded grid map um, is just not for appearance purposes. It does have an actual meaning. Uh, for example, each day represents a different color. Um, if you can see, there is the green areas, for example, starting from the top of the map all the way to the bottom of the map. You'll see that it is staggered and spaced out. Why do we, and these are the areas that all get cleaned on Monday. We do this for a number of reasons. That means on, on non-green days, you're able to park your cars on those blocks that are in close proximity to your home. So we didn't do it all green one area, all purple another area, because that means you would have to take your car and park it four or five, six, seven blocks away, and then bring it all the way back. We wanted to try to provide options for people to keep their car as close to them as possible while we sweep and clean. And we wanted to make it as convenient as possible. And all of those small streets in between, parking is available at that location as well. So we wanted to, again, make it as convenient as possible for residents to be able to move their car and return it while we do an effective job of cleaning the block. So the areas in Strawberry Mansion that we started on the past couple of years and will continue is Diamond Street to Lehigh Avenue from Sedgley to 33rd Street. The next area that we're cleaning is in South Philadelphia from McKean Street to Oregon Avenue from 8th Street to 4th Street. In Southwest Philadelphia, the boundaries include Woodland Avenue to King Cesar Avenue from 49th Street to Symmetry Avenue. In North Central Philadelphia again from Broad Street to 22nd Street from Glenwood to Diamond Street. in Kensington, from 2nd Street to Kensington Avenue, from Tioga to Lehigh Avenue. In West Philadelphia, from Parkside to Spring Garden Avenue, from 52nd Street to 40th Street. And the additional areas, the eight additional areas that we'll be adding effective April 4th that are, have not been posted yet, but are still required to move their cars are in Nicetown, from Broad Street to Clarissa, from Hunton Park to Windrum. In Logan, from Godfrey Avenue to Roosevelt Boulevard, from Broad Street to Fifth Street. In Germantown, from Berkeley to Shelton, from Pulaski to Wakefield. In Southwest Philadelphia, near Pasco Street, from 58th to 70th, to Greenway to Dix. In Frankfurt, in the northeast section of the city, from Bridge to Adams, to Griscom, to Charsdale. In Port Richmond, we'll be expanding another area from Kensington to Aramingo to Tioga to Lehigh. And the final two areas that we'll be cleaning starting April 4th is in Point Breeze from Christian to McKean, from Broad Street to 24th Street. Actually, we'll be going all the way up to the bridge on 25th Street because we know the challenges that people have with illegal dumping under the 25th Street, Street Bridge Railway. 
And then finally in West Phillip, Fair Hill, uh, in North Philadelphia from 5th Street to 13th Street from Glenwood Avenue to Susquehanna. These are all of the areas that we are planning cleaning this year. We're notifying residents in those areas, again, through these type of community means and informational brochures and flyers, which spells out exactly what I just discussed in this presentation. It gives you the times, the locations, and in addition, and the requirements from being a part of the program. Number one, if your saw area is posted, you have to move your car. Number two, once we clean it, we expect it to remain litter free and residents are responsible for following the streets department rules and regulations by keeping their sidewalks litter free, by ensuring that they don't set out their trash before their scheduled trash day to ensure that uh, trash is set out in appropriate containers and bags. All of these things contribute to the litter conditions in the city of Philadelphia. So this information will be provided. In addition to PPA uh, enforcement, sweep officers will also be going to the area checking for these rules and regulations are followed. And if there's a violation, they will also issue a CVN for the appropriate file. We're using these type of meetings, uh, meetings again to reach out to as many people as possible to notify them about the importance of the mechanical cleaning program in the city of Philadelphia. So this is the last of five meetings that we conducted for community residents to voice their opinions and concerns uh, for the program. Uh, ultimately, we will continue to evaluate the effectiveness of the program as well, but we've used social media, we put out press releases, uh, we've done interviews, and we certainly will continue to try to get the word out prior to and during program to get uh, keep people updated on our progress. This is the timeline for things to happen. Um, March 1st, we already put out a press release. We've already activated our social media toolkit. We've began going door to door. Uh, we've updated the website and we've held five community engagement meetings. We will also do a second press release after these meetings a social media blitz, and we'll conduct another litter index specifically in the targeted areas that we are cleaning because we want to measure the effectiveness of the program. We do a baseline study in the beginning before we clean. We do one in the middle to check the progress to see if there are any changes in litter scores. And finally, we do a final one for evaluation to see if there was ultimately an overall change, which was our goal. We want streets to go from four to three, which is extremely littered, to two and one, which is slightly littered or no litter at all. These are the things that we're working towards. The program will kick off April 4th. Uh, we have web-based map mapping um, tool for them to be able to track the sweepers so that they can know when to return their car. PPA, Philadelphia Parking Authority, will implement a warning phase. Traffic will continue to post signs in other areas that are not currently posted, that does take a significant amount of time and resources, but we're working towards those other eight areas. No ticketing will take place while we're posting signs in those areas that haven't had signage yet. And we will conduct sweep enforcement of those areas, ensuring that the rules and regulations are followed. May, the program will be in full swing with full ticketing. This is when, this is an important date, when people will actually receive tickets for not moving their cars. So May Day is a key month for this mechanical street sweeping program. Traffic will continue to post signs in those other neighborhoods. PPA will continue the ticketing program all the way to the conclusion in November. We'll conduct a midway litter index in July and August. We'll also conduct another residential survey to determine the effectiveness of the program and how well it's received or not. And we will conduct a final litter index and provide a report on how effective the program has operated for the 2022 season. At that point, we'll begin to find, explore ways and how we can expand programs as neighborhoods become cleaner. We'll expand the program out to other neighborhoods and other blocks. This concludes the formal part of the presentation today.